Hey everybody, welcome back to another Decode Tech video and another video in our Python programming tutorial series. So first off the bat, check out the new logo in the background. Give the video a thumbs up if you like the new look. Also, we're gonna be getting into a series of four videos here on what are called data structures, which is just a way of collecting things together and being able to manipulate them exactly as we'd want to. And the whole gist of computer programming, whether it's getting input from a user whether it's just getting a program to calculate something for us, or whether we're getting something from a file like a spreadsheet or from a database, we wanna be able to bring in that data into our program into these data structures. That way we can do exactly what we want with them. And the four data structures that come built into Python are lists, tuples or tuples, depends on who you talk to, dictionaries and sets. But this video, we're gonna talk about lists. So let's head on over to Visual Studio Code and let's get started. All right, so a list is just a collection of things, whether it be strings, integers, or floats. And how do we create this list? Well, if you remember earlier when we've talked about loops, we saw a thing that looked a little bit like this, and I said it was a list. So a list is just made with these square brackets, and that means it's a list in Python. But normally, you want to store a list in a variable or assign it to memory so you can do things with this list. So for example, if we typed in new and just hit the assignment operator, like you assign any other variable, and then put our list, we now have a list saved in the variable new. And to prove that, let's just print out our new variable. So I'm gonna print new, and I'm gonna save and run the program, and let's see what we get for output. All right, and you see down here in the console, we get one, two, three, our list of integers in this case. Now to prove it's a list, I could run the type function on it. And remember, you need another set of parentheses if you're using a function inside of a function. So we have the print function and then the type function inside the print function and then the new argument going into the type function. So let's run this. And you see we get class list down here. Now just ignore the class for now, but we know this is a list. All right, now often when you see lists, there's often just two square brackets with nothing in between. So you might see something like new, and then that's it at the top of a file or at the top of a for loop or maybe a while loop. This is because we often don't know what we want in the list right at the beginning of the program or right when we're creating it. As you saw before, I could put items in the list right away. I just put in one, two, three as my list items. Each value in the list is referred to as an item. So a list like this would have three items. They're all separated by this comma. But if I take these out, we still have a list. It's just an empty list. Then how can we add things to this list since it's empty? Well, we can use what is called a method. If you watch my last video on string formatting, I introduced the dot format method that formats string objects. Once again, we didn't get into what objects are, but basically most things in Python are an object. An integer is an integer object, a string is a string object, and so on. And now we're dealing with list objects, so they have their own methods. And as I said in the last video, a method is really just a function, but it's tied to specific objects. So for example, I'm gonna say new dot append and then open parentheses and close parentheses because we know that functions need parentheses right after them. And I just noticed that my comment down here is kind of out of the way. So I'm gonna come up and put that above here so you can understand what's going on a little bit better. And then this append function takes an argument. And if I hover over it here in VS Code, you see it says it takes an object. So we could pass it pretty much any object. So let's pass it a string of A. Now I'm gonna print out new again to show you that we added A to this list. So if I print new, I'm gonna run this program and you see down in the bottom, we get an A, but notice there is square brackets around this A. So we know the A is in our list called new. Now something to realize about the append method is it always adds to the end of the list. You can think of it as append has end right in it. So that tells you it always adds to the end of the list. So now I'm also gonna append something else. I'm gonna say new dot append. How about we append C? Now let's save and run it. Now we should have A and C. And you see we get C at the end because we use the append method to add it. 
Okay, so now we got items in our list. Now, how do we use these values that are in the list or these items? So I'm gonna to go to list2.py and we're gonna look at getting things from a list. So here I have a list of integers stored in a variable called nums. So now we can access this list with the nums variable. Now, one of the most common ways of getting elements or items from a list is by indexing. So what is an index? Well, once again, if you watched my previous video on string formatting, with the dot format method, we showed that you could decide which argument in the format method got plugged in where in the string by using the indexes. Indexes are just numbers corresponding to where an item is in the list. For example, one is at index zero. Programming languages almost always start counting at zero. There are some exceptions, but Python is no exception. The second place in a list would be index one, two, three, four, and so on, as long as your list is. So now we can use that index to get at values in our list. So if I say nums, now to use an index, you use square brackets right after the variable name. I'm gonna to refer to this as index notation. So if I use index zero, that should get me the first item or element in the list, which would be one in our case. So I'm gonna print this to the screen just to see if we're right, and we should be. So I'm gonna save and run. And you see we do get one printed out at the bottom. So that's working as we expected. So if we went five, it's actually gonna be index four because we start counting at zero. Zero, one, two, three, four. So let's try four and let's save and run that. And you see we do get five. Also, if you don't know how long your list is, you can do a little trick by adding a negative and putting one and that'll go from the back one spot, which would be our five. So if we run this, we should get our last item in the list. And sure enough, we do get five down here at the bottom. You can also index a slice from a list. So if you want several numbers, say you want two, three, and four out of our list, you can do what is called a slice. And how you do that is you give it the starting position. So if we want the two, it's gonna be the starting position of one. Then you put a colon, and on the other side of the colon, you put what number you wanna go up to but not including, right like our range function, four. So we're gonna get two, three, and four printed out to the screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna run this. And sure enough, we get our slice of the list, two, three, and four. Now something to notice is that you aren't actually stripping these values out of the nums list. So if we print out nums after we do this slice on line four, the main list will still contain two, three, and four. This will simply make a copy of that slice from the nums list. So that's just something to note there. Now, if we're getting from the beginning to the end of a list, we can do a shorthand notation where instead of putting zero here for the beginning, we can just leave it blank. And then Python will know, oh, give me from the beginning of this list to the end. So I'm gonna save and run. And sure enough, we get one, two, three, four. You can do the same thing from wherever you're at in the list to the end. So for example, if I want from index one to the end, I can just leave the right side of the colon blank and I'll run that and we should get two to five. And sure enough, we get two to five. And once again, those are just copies. They're not actually removing those values from the list. If you do want to copy the whole list for, for reasons we'll see here soon, you can just leave both sides blank and that'll take from the beginning all the way to the end of the list. So let's go ahead and try to run that. And sure enough, we get the whole list but this is just a copy of the original list. So what we could do instead of printing it out is we could assign it to a new variable called new nums, and then we could have a new list with a copy of our original nums list. All right, so that was getting things from a list. Now let's look at how we can modify items in a list. So I'm gonna to go to list3.py and we have another identical list. And one simple way to modify an item in a list is to once again use that index. So I need to use the name of the variable storing the list object, which in our case is nums, with square brackets right afterwards. Notice no assignment operator in between because that would just be reassigning nums to a new list. 
and then the index inside the square brackets. So let's say I wanted to change the first element to hello. So I'm gonna put zero because the first element has the index of zero. And then I'm gonna use the assignment operator and then I'm gonna use the new value I wanna put. So if I wanna put hello, I'm just gonna do command S to save or control S, depends on what operating system you're on. Hit start. Oops, and nothing prints out because I forgot to print out my list again. So I'm gonna write print nums and we'll try it again. And now we get hello one, two, three, four, five printed out. And that did actually modify the original list there. That is not a copy. One thing to note is you cannot use this method if the value isn't already in the list. For example, our highest index is zero, one, two, three, four. So we could not use five in here to assign a fifth value to the list. It'll just throw us an error message and it will say index out of range. All right, one of the most popular ways of working with lists is with these list methods I talked about earlier. So dot format was a string method. It's a method or a function you could run on string objects. Now we're gonna look at more functions you can run on list objects. So every list you ever make will be able to run these methods on them. So we already looked at dot append and we already saw how that works. So now we're gonna look at extend. This adds multiple items to the end of a list. So once again, adding to the end of a list. I'm gonna get rid of these values. So we just have our original one, two, three, four, five list. And I'm gonna call nums because that's the name of our list object. And I'm gonna say dot. And now extend takes a parameter or an argument. And one common thing people normally pass to it is just a list of things they wanna add. So if we put a list, which is square brackets, and we do six, seven, eight divided by commas, or separated by commas rather, and then I save and run the program, it should add those three elements to our list. And of course, once again, I forgot to actually print out our list again, so I'm gonna to have to print nums, save and run the file again. And now you see down at the bottom, we get six, seven, and eight added to our list. So you might be thinking the append and extend methods are very, very similar why use one over the other? Well, extend lets you add multiple elements to a list where append only allows you to add one element. For example, if we tried to change extend to append here and then ran this, we will get a list stored as our last element inside our nums list. So a list can actually store a list and we'll look more into that here shortly. All right, I'm just gonna clear the terminal before I run it so we can see things better. Then I'm gonna save and run. And now you see we get one, two, three, four, five, and then a list inside of our list as six, seven, eight. And that is at index five. So that whole list is index five. And to prove that, for nums here, I would just index into our list and say index five. So index five should return me just this new value we added to our list. So I'll run it again. And sure enough, we get six, seven, and eight printed out as our value at index five. All right, one more list method for adding to our list, and that is insert. The insert method adds one item in the list where you specify. So if I go nums.insert, because nums is the name of our list object, then we run the dot insert method. Now it takes two arguments or parameters and the first one is the index. So if we say zero, that would be at the beginning of the list. And then comma, the second argument you wanna add, which should be whatever data you wanna add. So let's just put in the string of B this time for something different. And then I'm printing out my list on line eight. And you see, it doesn't remove my one that was at the beginning of the list before. It simply inserted the string of B into the nums list at index zero. So that is how the insert method works. All right, let's look at deleting items from our list. So I'm gonna to go to list4.py. Here we have the same num list, and we're gonna look at how we can delete things from this list. So the first way is with the del keyword, just D-E-L, space, and then the index that you wanna delete. So if I say nums, and remember to index in, I need square brackets right after nums, without an assignment operator, and then of course the index. So I'm gonna do index four, which should delete my fifth, or my five rather, from the end of my list. So now I'm not gonna make the same mistake and I'm gonna actually print out my nums list this time, and I'm gonna hit start. And you see we no longer have five in our list, and I could just as easy change this to zero, one, two, or three, 
and it would delete the appropriate items from the list. Now we're gonna look at some more list methods, and these methods help us delete things from our list. So for example, if we don't know the index, but we wanna remove something, we can use the remove method. So once again, we need the name of our object, in this case it's nums, dot remove. And once again, our parentheses, and then inside the parentheses, our argument is gonna be whatever we want to remove. So all we need to know is that something exists in our list. So let's say I know there's a two in my list somewhere, I just don't know where it is. So I can plug in a two, and then I'm gonna reprint out my list. So I get something to the console, and I'm gonna save and run, and we should see that we no longer have our two in our list of nums. And one other method we'll look at for deleting values from a list is pop, P-O-P. And what pop does is gives you by default the last value in the list, and then it actually returns that value to you, so then you could actually assign that to a variable. You could say like last underscore item gets num.pop, and then let's print out last item instead of our nums list and see if we get the five from our nums list. And I'll start it. And sure enough, way down here at the bottom, we get a five. Now also with pop, you can specify the index that you wanna remove. So I could do index of zero and print the last item. And now it's kind of confusing because last item is actually gonna be storing the first item since pop will remove whatever index we give it. So I'll run the program and you see we do get the first value from our list. All right, let's look at how we can search a list for values. So I'm gonna to go to list.py here, and I have a list called names storing names. Very fitting, right? All right, so I'm gonna go down to a new line, and we're gonna use the in keyword to search in our names list. So I'm gonna say if a, b, e, in names, and then remember if statements have to end with a colon, and a colon means a block of code is coming which is just lines of code grouped together related to the statement above. And then in my block, I'm gonna say print found it. And then I'm gonna save and run this and let's see if Abe is in our list. And sure enough, it found it. Now let's try just taking E off and just try searching for AB. I'm gonna run it again. And you see this time we didn't find it. So if you're searching in a list, you have to make sure you have the full correct value for it to be able to match. And one really useful feature of this is when we looked at removing items from a list, the dot remove method only works if the element is actually in the list to remove it. Otherwise, it will throw an error. So what you could do is say, if Abe in names, and then do names dot remove, and then put Abe in there. And then it would only try to remove Abe from the list if he is actually in the list. All right, now let's look at a method for searching a list. If we know something is in a list and we just want the index of whatever is in the list, we can do the name of our list, so names, and then dot index is the name of the function. And what index does is this can be a little confusing because we were indexing the list to get an item, but then the index method gives us the index of the item. So it does the opposite of doing names, whatever the index number is, it'll give us that zero instead of the value that is at that zeroth index. So for example, if I put in here Abe, it should give me the index of where the string Abe is in our list. So I'm gonna actually have to print this out or I won't see anything. So I'll print names.index Abe, and I'll save and run. And oops, you actually see I got an accidental teaching moment here because I actually removed Abe from my list, showing you how to remove people from a list on line five. So I'm gonna stop the program, and I'm gonna remove that line four and five, and I'm gonna run it again, so we actually get our Abe index. And there we do get zero printed to the screen. So on line six, we have index notation, which takes the index and finds the value at that index. And then on line seven, we have the index method that takes the value and returns the index from that list. All right, let's move on to list6.py. Now remember, back when I introduced for loops, I showed you something that looked like for i and then square brackets, one, two, three, four, five. And as we now know, that is just a Python list. So you can loop over lists and this can be really powerful. So I'll just show you that this works and I'll print it out. And remember, in a for loop, you have your for keyword, you have i, which is just a variable storing each of the values in whatever you're looping over, in this case, our list. So we have i storing one, the first iteration or time through the loop, then storing two, the next iteration, and so on. 
So basically you're getting each value of the list one at a time. Now probably more commonly how you'll be using this is you'll have like a list of names and I quickly made a list called names, Ron, Jim, and Tom, and then just take the names variable and put it in place of that actual list there in our loop. And so now we'll be printing out our list of names. You see one at a time, I got Ron, Jim, and Tom. And so now you could do something with this I variable. For example, you might use an F string, which is just putting an F in front of the string, and then we can plug in values, and I can say hello, and then my placeholder, and then put in I. So it should say, hello Ron, hello Jim, and hello Tom. So I'll save and run. And you see we do get hello in each name. So this can really start to unlock some powerful things in your programs. And if you didn't know what I just did here in the string, go ahead and check out my last video on string formatting. All right, let's move on to loop7.py and we're gonna look at how to sort a list. So here again, I have a list of names and they're not sorted. So there's some methods for list, once again, some more methods to help us out with this. And the first one we're gonna look at is sort. So I'm gonna say names.sort and then right below it, I'm just gonna print out names. So if I run this, my list now gets sorted in alphabetical order. Now that original list actually gets sorted so you can't actually print it out all in one line. You can't, for example, do print names sorted. It'll print out something called none, which basically means it doesn't return any value. And that's because it's actually sorting the original list. So you see, I get none down here. Okay, so what if we want to sort it backwards? Well, there's actually a reverse method. So I can do names dot reverse, and you see VS Code actually gives me some suggestions here. I'm gonna just select reverse. And then same thing, I'm gonna print out names on the next line. And let's see if we get it reversed sorted. And sure enough, we get it sorted backwards. So what if you didn't want to sort the original list, but you just wanted a sorted copy of that original list? Well, remember with index notation, we can grab a copy of the list by just putting a colon in by itself. So what I could do is say new list or new underscore list gets the copy of the names list. And then I can say new list dot sorted and then I can get or dot sort and then I can get a sorted version of the names list while retaining my original list of names. So I'm gonna print out names and I'm gonna print out the new list. I'm gonna save and run this. And you see I still have my original list like it was and now I have my new sorted list right down below it. Another way you could do it is there's a sorted function in Python. And now we just looked at methods, which are functions, but they're tied directly to an object. So a just regular function can just be called like this without the dot tying it to an object. So instead of names.sorted, it's just sorted. And what that will do is return us a copy of a list that's sorted. So what I can do is I could say new list, gets sorted and then in the sorted function, I could pass in names. And now that'll still keep our names list unsorted and we'll get a new list that is the sorted copy of the names list. So let's go ahead and try that. And sure enough, we get the same results. So remember, you have functions by themselves and then you have methods that are used with a dot that ties them to a specific object. Okay, one last thing on lists before I end this tutorial. A list is what is known as a mutable data type. And all mutable means is it can change. We can append things to it and we can delete from it. There's also immutable or data types that can't change. And we're gonna be looking at some immutable types and also some more mutable types. But just know that lists are mutable, which mean they can be changed. So if you're reading documentation somewhere or watching some other tutorial and somebody says this needs an immutable data type, that means this needs something that can't be changed. And before I go, I have a challenge for you. And this challenge is to make the logic for a name exchange program. Now we're not gonna actually make out the whole program, but just start on the logic. And we're gonna ask the user for their family members and after they are done, we'll show them who they entered with a nice message. Then ask them if they wish to remove anybody. If they type yes, we'll remove the person and reshow them their family members. And then we'll quit the program. If they type no, we'll just exit the program. And lastly, if they type anything else, we'll say invalid input, please try again. So the wonderful thing about programming is there's many different ways to solve problems. So there's not really a right or wrong way to solve this, 
but I believe you have all the tools you need to solve a problem like this. You have loops, you have conditions like if statements, and you now have lists as data structures to be able to store some family names. So you can pause the video and then come back and check out how I solved it. All right, so on line 24, I created an empty list. And then on line 26, I'm getting input for their family members. And I'm saying, when you're done, just type in done. And then on line 28, I have a while loop. And I'm saying, wow, it's not done. Or while they don't enter done, family.append. So append what? Append the person they add, which we're getting up here with input. And then if it's not done, we're going to ask for input again. And this time, instead of saying this whole message, I'm just saying enter another name. Then once they're done, we'll print out two blank lines just to format it a little nicer. Then on line 35, we're saying print you entered, and then I'm looping over the people that they entered for their family, and I'm printing out a formatted string with a dash, the name of the person they entered, sorry, the name of the people in their family. Then on line 40, I'm saying, is there anybody you'd like to remove? Then on line 42, I'm saying, a valid variable to false. Remember, that's a Boolean. A Boolean's either true or false. And then I'm saying, while not valid, which is basically saying, while not true. So it will run once because the first time it's not gonna be true because I set valid to false. And then once it runs, I'm saying, if the person typed in capital Y or lowercase y, ask them who they want to remove on line 47. Then on line 48, actually remove that person they entered. And then once again, I'm going to print out your family now has and loop over who all is in their family. And then I'm just going to exit the program and I'm going to set valid to true. That way this loop doesn't execute again. Else if they typed N or lowercase N, we'll exit the program right away and set valid to true. Else if they enter anything else, we're going to say it's an invalid response and we'll ask them if there's anybody they'd like to remove again. And I just noticed I have a typo right there. And then we'll set valid to false. That way the loop runs again or until they actually input a valid input. All right, so that's pretty much everything you need to know to get started working with lists. Now I'm sure this seems like a lot to remember, but you can always Google these things, list method to remove item or list method to add item. And I recommend really working with this on your own to get some muscle memory and to really help these concepts sink in. And of course, you can always rewind the video and watch it again. So if you liked it, please give me a thumbs up. If you like this type of content, please subscribe if you're not already. And if you want to donate on Patreon, I'll leave a link in the description below. Otherwise, until next time.